Welcome back students. In this lecture we're going to talk about deploying your database because the real power of spatial databases is the fact that it can be accessed by many people at the same time. So we've been working on localhost in this course if you've been following along. And that's great for learning. It can be useful if you just want to keep your data in a PostGIS database even if you're only going to have one person using it because there are still a lot of advantages to that. But the real power of a spatial database is that it can be put on a server and accessed by lots of different clients at the same time. And so to do that, you have to get it on a server. And like I said at the beginning of the course, if you're part of a company, there's a good chance that you have a server. And in that case, your best bet is to talk to whoever's in charge of your IT department, or whoever set up your server, and talk to them about installing PostgreSQL and PostGIS. And they'll probably have a bunch of questions for you regarding how you want it to be accessed, whether from the web, whether you need it to be accessed by remote users outside of your firewall, etc. And then they'll set things up and get back to you with the information that you need to connect. The host name, the port number, a username and password for the database, etc. But if you don't have access to a server, and you don't want to set up your own server, and I would recommend not doing that unless you really, really know what you're doing, because it can be complicated to set up the security and everything to make sure that your data is not vulnerable to hackers. So the other option is to get a hosting service where you pay so much per month and then you have an instance of PostgreSQL set up that you can install PostGIS on and you can be up and running with minutes. And the nice thing about this option is it doesn't take much money at all to get started and they handle doing all the backups for you. Your data is replicated on several different servers. They handle all the security and all that kind of stuff. So you don't have to do any of that. And that can save you a tremendous amount of time and money. The disadvantage, of course, is that all the data is going to come back and forth over the Internet. And so it's not going to be as fast as a server that's local in your company that has hardwired Ethernet connections. But if you don't have tons and tons and tons of data, it's a very viable solution. And so over the rest of this section, I'm going to talk about three different options, and we'll go through examples of each. First one is using a standard web hosting service, and I'm going to recommend one called A2 Hosting. And the reason I'm recommending that one is it's one of the few that has PostgreSQL available by default. Most web hosting services use MySQL, and you can get access to MySQL through A2 Hosting as well. And I think probably if you have another hosting service already, you could ask them, and they might be able to get PostgreSQL set up, because it is free and open source, and it won't cost them anything. But A2 Hosting has it by default, and so they're used to working with it. And if you're going to go this route, the first thing you'll need to do is decide on a domain name. And this is just simply the name that identifies this server. And if you build a website that connects to this database, this will be the domain name for that website too. So it'll be something like www.mywebsite.com. But you have to have that first. And during the process of signing up for A2 Hosting, they can handle the registration of this domain name for you. It costs like $15 a year, I think. And they'll check automatically and make sure that it's a name that's available and give you options, the name you choose is not available, things like that. So we'll see how that works in a bit. And if you do decide to go with A2 Hosting, I'd really appreciate it if you go through this link. If you use this reference code right here, it gets some credit for hosting the websites that I already have set up with them. That helps me out a lot. Now a little bit of a downside for using a dedicated web hosting service like A2 Hosting is that by default, the remote access is disabled. So if you have a web page that you've built that you're hosting on this domain, that web page will be able to access data that's on your PostGIS instance. But if somebody tries to log in from outside that domain, they won't be allowed to. And this is for obvious security reasons. If you have a dedicated IP address, you can ask them to provide access from that IP address. And that means that just requests from that IP address will be able to access the PostGIS data. And that works well. So when I was working for another company. My employer had a server. They had the whole system set up. We all had dedicated IP addresses. And so I had it set up that anybody in my company could access that data. But anybody outside the company would still would be able to. And that's great if you're in that situation. But generally, if you have a laptop or something and you're working on a wireless internet connection at your house or something, you don't have a static IP address. You have dynamic IP addresses. And those IP addresses change every time you access your wireless connection. And in that case, you won't be able to access that data without taking a few other steps. And it's possible. I'm going to show you how to do it. But it can be a little bit of a hassle. Another option is a company called AccuGIS. And AccuGIS is a web hosting service. You can host your website there. But they really have a geospatial focus. And they have dedicated PostGIS plans that started about $10 a month. And they also have GeoServer hosting plans. And so GeoServer is an open source kind of equivalent to ArcGIS server. 
It allows you to create services from your data, so your data can be accessed by other people. And they might be able to view it and analyze it in ArcGIS or put it on the web map or things like that. And they have GeoNode hosting services. And GeoNode allows you to create an entire spatial data infrastructure just with your own data. And that's something that's really very similar to ArcGIS Online, where you can make data sets available, you can make different maps available, you can allow people to make maps with the data that you host on. But it's all open source and it's all free except for the hosting service, which is not particularly cheap. I think they start at about $50 per month. But if you have a big organization and that sounds like something that you'd be interested in having, you can do that on AccuGIS as well. Now, it's probably possible to do some of this stuff maybe on A2 hosting. I'm not 100% sure what would be required to get these things installed. The big difference is that AccuGIS is really dedicated to GIS hosting. And so they have these things available. They know exactly what they are. They make it really easy to access them. And you can have remote access available. So you can make it really easy to access your PostGIS data from QGIS or another client, no matter where you are. You don't need a static IP address or anything like that. You still need credentials to log into the server and log into the database. So it's not like anybody's really going to be able to access your data easily, but it's just one level of protection that's removed. And it really depends on how important security is for your data, if you think people are actually going to be trying to hack in and getting it, etc. And then another option we're going to look at is cloud hosting. And I'm going to use Amazon AWS for that. I know that works with PostGIS. And the difference between hosting on the cloud and going through a web hosting site can be a little confusing. I'll admit that up front. I'm not 100% sure I understand it totally myself. But if you use a web hosting site, the focus is really on hosting a website. And generally, you pay so much per month. And how much you pay depends on how much data you need, how much bandwidth, how fast you need to be, etc. You can pay more to get all those things. But it's still generally a monthly fee. With the cloud, you can set up a website on the cloud, but you could just have a database running on the cloud. But the big advantage is that it's elastic. And what that means is that if your website suddenly starts going viral and a bunch of people start accessing all at once, you'll automatically dedicate more resources, more memory, more bandwidth, etc. And that can be really handy, because you don't want your website to crash if all of a sudden the New York Times has a story on it and you start getting tens of thousands of hits. And you're used to only having a couple hundred a day. So depending on your situation, this might be something that you want to look into. The other thing with the cloud is that you tend to pay by how much you use. So on Amazon, they have a free tier. And if you're not using a lot of resources, you don't pay anything. But you have to be careful because, again, if you do suddenly start getting a lot of use and your website does go viral all of a sudden, you can get stuck with a bill for that from them. And you can set it up so you can put limits on how much they'll be able to expand and what happens when you reach that limit, whether you just get a notice and you can decide for yourself to increase your resources or whether they increase those resources automatically. But it's just something that you should be aware of. Thanks for listening. This was just one lecture in an entire course on spatial databases focused on PostGIS and QGIS. And this course is available now on udemy.com. It has more than 70 lectures and 11 hours of content. And I'm adding more content all the time. And you can get it now for only $20 with the coupon code COURSE5. And if you're interested, you're also welcome to check out my other courses on WebGIS and QGIS. And you can get more information on those at the following location. Or you can just Google Geospatial Brainstorming Courses. And it should take you right to this site.